a process which helps us in doing the forecasting of the financial statements that's the major thing that we do as a part of this session if at all i have to make a forecasted financial statement based on the historical financial statements of the company what is the process that i typically follow right so because as a part of equity valuation we will be using various methodologies let's say like discounted cash flow methodology wherein we are trying to find the future cash flows and then try to discount them to the present value and if at all i need the future cash flows obviously i need the future financial statements the income statement as well as the balance sheet so what we are trying to understand from this session is how do i typically go about forecasting each and every element of the financial statements in order to do an in depth valuation of the uh, uh, in depth valuation of the company so this helps me in uh, trying to come out with uh, identifying the various elements of uh, the financial statements and on what basis generally i do go about with their predictions and forecast so that much better valuation can come out uh, from those financial statements so when we look at uh, the typical uh, development of the inputs generally we follow either a bottom up analysis where wherein we look at the company you look at directly the financial statements of the company based on the industry in which it is operating and the country in which it is uh, operating so whenever i am doing the forecast whenever i am doing the forecast let's say for the revenue we purely look at the company level data okay at what rate the company has grown its revenues in the last uh, few years okay one year it has grown at 10% the other year at 20% the other year at minus 5% historically these are the kind of growth rates uh, this company has experienced in its uh, revenues so what you can very well uh, do is based on the historical uh, growth rates of the revenues you arrive at one number which you will use for prediction uh, uh, for forecasting the revenues for the future period so uh, the base which we are using to forecast the revenues is purely the historical revenue growth of this current company itself or any other factors which are more and more specific to this company so whenever i am trying to do the forecast of the revenues or preparing the futuristic uh, financial statements exclusively based on the past details of the company alone i am calling it as a bottom up analysis but on the other side when i start right from the economic level link that economy to the industry and link the industry to the company so based on uh, let's say economic growth let's say the gdp growth i focus the industry growth at what rate the industry as such can grow and based on the industry growth i look at <coughs> at what rate can the company grow when i am doing <coughs> this kind of an analysis starting at the economy level then the industry then the company level so the revenue forecast of the company will not come from the previous uh, growth rate of the revenues but it is a function of economic uh, growth projected as well as the industrial growth uh, projected which will result in the company's revenue growth so this kind of an approach is what we call as the top down analysis and in case a company uses both of them as a part of uh, 
as a part of the uh, uh, forecasting uh, process then we call those kind of approaches as hybrid kind of model these are the ones which are more more comfortably used in the industry because uh, it helps us uh, to validate one with the help of the other now again when i am trying to forecast the revenues now we are going with each and every item <coughs> of the financial statement how do i get into the forecasting of each and every item present in the financial statement so initially when we are starting off with the uh, revenues we are talking about two major methods to forecast the revenues one is the growth relative to the gdp approach so i'll try to see at what rate the gdp is expected to grow so let's say okay historically i have seen that when the gdp was growing at 5% my company was growing at 6% when the gdp was growing at 7% my company was uh, growing at 8.5% let's say some such kind of uh, historical data was existing then probably what i can say is yes overall it is looking like my company will grow either 1% more than the gdp or probably 1.1.2 oh, times the current G, the gdp growth rate some such kind of a relationship we will try to derive either in terms of additive to the gdp so okay gdp has grown by 5% so my company may grow at 1% more or if because the gdp has grown by 5% i am expecting that my company will grow 1.2 times that 5% which is like 6% some such kind of a relationship which is either in an additive form or an multiplicative form with respect to the gdp growth rate uh, is what i am taking directly to my revenue growth for the for my current company and based on that estimate of the gdp growth rate i am trying to compute the futuristic uh, sales for this particular company so as simple as this when i am looking at growth relative to the gdp growth mechanism i'll first estimate or probably get an estimate of the gdp growth rate add some percentage to it or increment it by some factor to say that my company will be growing at this particular rate and uh, use that particular percentage for increasing the revenues to the next period that is one mechanism that we can use to forecast the revenues the other as i am saying market growth and market share approach so this is a proper eic mechanism economy industry and company based mechanism so first look at what is the gdp growth based on the gdp growth don't estimate the company sales directly you estimate the industry sales so based on uh, the economy growth try to identify the relationship between the economy growth and the industry growth based on that relationship identify what is the sales that is expected for this industry then again try to identify the relationship between industry and company using the market share right market share is typically uh, what proportion of the industry sales is contributed by the company so based on the estimate of the market share and once you have already estimated the industry sales you you take the market share estimated market share of the company multiply it with the industry sales and then give a revenue number to this particular uh, company for the future now because of this approach the the good thing that might come out is especially if i am operating with uh, multiple business segments in multiple geographies each jo in each geography the industry can grow at a different rate in each uh, industry uh, in each industry the market share of the company could be different uh, uh for each industry in different uh, geographies 
so overall when i am trying to predict the overall revenue it comes out as a much better representation because i get different percentage growths in different geographies the sum total of them is what is giving me a better picture to forecast my revenues so that is uh, how we take an entry for the revenues into the income statement i can use any other approaches also but most common prevalent approaches are i look at either a direct relationship between uh, the gdp growth and uh, the company growth or in the middle i bring in the industry growth and uh, link the industry with the company using the market share kind of an approach then here one more thing that is worth assessing is is this particular company having economies of scale very important uh, item for us to evaluate is the economies of scale applicable to this industry how do i see what is economies of uh, scale uh, that is getting applied if i increase my volume <coughs> as the business is growing probably look at it like this as the sales is growing if there is uh, economies of scale the cost of goods sold may grow but not at the same rate as sales but may grow at a slightly lesser rate compared to sales which means when i take the cost of goods sold to sales ratio this ratio should be gradually falling as the business is increasing as the business is increasing if i see this ratio gradually falling or even for that matter any other expenses not only cost of goods sold any other expenses if i am looking at them as a proportion of sales they should show some kind of a falling behavior which is what is an indication of get the company able to derive better economies of scale because as the volume increases the average cost will go down because uh, uh, because of uh, the volume the economies of scale if they are operating then the average cost will go down both of cost of goods sold as well as the total expenses which will result in higher operating margin so if at all a company is uh, deriving higher operating margins year over year with the growth of business means if i am seeing that the sales and operating margins they are showing a positive correlation then i can very very comfortably say that this company is exhibiting economies of scale so generally or the other way it is uh, worth looking at is try taking all the firms in that particular industry if even the largest of the firms have a very high market share or if the uh, our largest of the firms obviously will have a high market share but check out if they have high operating margins also compared to the other firm if that is the case you can very well say that this in this particular industry the top notch companies are able to exhibit economies of scale because when we are trying to get into the modeling process especially uh, when i have to forecast the cost of goods sold uh, as a proportion of the revenues if the company is exhibiting economies of scale then probably i should not increase the cost of goods sold at the same rate uh, as the increase in revenues but if the company if the economies of scale is no more applicable then probably i can increase the cost of goods sold in the same proportion of the revenue to assess that particular part of the income statement we typically as uh, we typically uh, evaluate whether the economies of scale is present or not then once we have decided no there is no economies of scale then we are also 